Hey guys, welcome to our traffic. Let's get going. Okay, so this is uh, our traffic. I'm your host, Thomas Adams. We are here today with Christine Shoemaker, and we are going to talk about all kinds of art. We're going to talk about her personal art. We're going to talk about other artists. We're going to talk about promotion. We're going to talk about hustles and side hustles. That's a big topic we like to talk about here. We'll get to that. That's second to last. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, every artist has got a funny story about stuff that they had to do at some point in their career, and we like to collect them. <laughs> um, so, now I'm going to have to think. I'm going to be put on the spot. Uh, yeah. Oh, Uh-oh. no, it's easy. Like, who hasn't worked for a caterer? That was a nightmare. Or, oh, yeah, like, you know what I'm true. saying? Like, who hasn't done it? It's going to be easy by the end. I, mean, I'll, okay, I promise. Okay. Okay, so just, like, background informational. If we're talking about your personal history, whatever you want to share with everybody, keeping in mind this goes nationwide, but you know what I mean? <laughs> right. I like, porn star. Like, no, like so, so far kidding. we've had 37 <laughs> downloads. So to those 37 hey. people, <laughs> I didn't check today. It's possibly like 39. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So like, what would be the background information you want to give? You can go as far back or as near as you want. It doesn't matter. Well, I was born. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay too. <laughs> you want to talk about where you were born? I'm I'm down no. for it. Um. Oh gosh. Well, I worked in an emergency room. So uh, yes, now I'm an artist, and uh, um, I run a PR company, and I'm an editor of an art magazine, and I run an experimental art space, but. Two years ago, I actually worked in an emergency room, and um, I was started out as a candy striper when I was fourteen. And Whoa. so, and a lo- it's funny, a lot of people don't know what that is. Oh no, um, I do because my volunteer. sisters were them. Yeah, 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 yeah I wore yeah. the red and white white outfit and the whole bit. And so, um, I started out in the medical field when I was in high school, and um, and it was a steady job. You know, or well. I got a job because I was a candy striper right, at the hospital. Yeah. So that was a steady job. It gave me medical insurance and got me my first car before my Sweet. friends. It was okay. Yeah. I had to drop the volleyball team, but you know, mm-hmm. regrets. <laughs> well, um, your Olympic dreams were shattered, but we have to make choices, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So um, it while I was in art school, because I knew I didn't want to do that the rest of my life. I didn't want to be a doctor. I didn't want to even be a nurse. I worked like more in administration. Mm-hmm. So um, I did that while I went to art school and or while I went to school trying to figure out what I wanted to do, which took me forever. Yeah. I was at the junior college for 10 years. And oh, then you uh, got me beat by two. <laughs> oh, That's good. amazing. I was eight. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I, I transferred. I max out indecision. <laughs> oh. No, I mean, I always knew I wanted to be an artist, but yeah. uh, but like just 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 getting it done for me. That was a struggle. Yeah. yeah. It Well, so I think seven years. Um, at the junior college I took like I was working full time and I was working two jobs so I used to deliver pizza so there's one thing I used to do oh okay side <laughs> um, hustles yes, we're gonna yes. save that we're gonna go in depth know, okay. in the pizza delivery in a minute um yeah I used to deliver pizza um and, you know, so I was going to school at night trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And when I decided, you know, realized that I wanted to make art my career, I went to summer school. I went to winter sessions. I went, you know, I yeah. took as many classes as I, as I could to transfer. Right. And um, I transferred to Cal State Northridge. Mm-hmm. And um, I got my art history degree because I didn't want to be a starving yeah. artist. It's a good choice. So, yeah. yeah. No, no, I know a lot of artists who went that way. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I got that education. So, yeah. you know, of just learning as much as I could about art. So yeah. I got my bachelor's in art history and I was going to get my master's because I figured that way I could teach. You know, mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. again, I didn't want to be a starving artist. So, yeah. of course, now it's like that. I know, you know, it's funny how you grow and how you learn. And that's such a stereotype. Oh, yeah. Although I know a lot of starving artists. So, but. um, <laughs> Yeah, we're going to get into that. Let's see. Lot. No, but yeah. like that. Yeah. But that's like we'll, we'll, we'll keep going with the background stuff. But we're going to get back into yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I started my master's in art history. And I think I did that for five years. And I was finished all of my coursework. I was taking, I 
took classes twice because, um, like, I studied with Betty Brown, who was amazing. She's an art historian, art critic in Los Angeles. And I loved her classes, and I became her GA and her TA. And, mm. um, I t- you know, I sat in on her classes and a couple of other, like, Marlena Donahue, who teaches at Otis, I think. Yeah. Um, she was she taught contemporary art history, and I just, I took her class twice because it was like, I'm not worthy. You know, uh-huh. I learned yeah. so much. Yeah. And, but then, um, so I was working on my thesis and I just decided I wanted, I had two years left of getting student loans. That was like the kicker because they were going to cut me off. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, it's either now or never. I want to focus on my own art. So I transferred to the studio art program and, um, and I had an amazing, um, instructor, Samantha Fields. And it's funny, I got into the program or I wanted to get into the painting program and I took my paintings in and I was also working in Second Life. Um, I don't know if you're familiar. Yeah. It's yeah. The 3d sure, online yeah. virtual uh-huh. world. Right. And Samantha accepted me into the program based on Second Life <laughs> rather than my paintings. So I always think about it. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> but I don't know. I think of the, <laughs> I think the Second Life stuff's pretty interesting. It is. I mean, so it like, is. Uh, I understand. But, like having not seen the paintings that you submitted, I would say like that Second Life stuff is kind of just yeah. like that's a that's a little bit of a mind worm. I'm like, oh, how are you working in that? It's just like, yeah, you know. no, definitely. And my paintings back then were crap. I would, <laughs> so, would, would you want to talk about what you what you did a little bit in yeah, Second Life? Yeah, no, definitely. Second Life made me who I am today. I mean, I didn't, I thought about it not too long ago, but I learned so much from Second Life that, um, uh, so let's see, I got into Second Life in 2006. Uh, my aunt and uncle were actually in it, and they're kind of old school hippies, uh-huh, so they uh-huh. love the alternative stuff. Sure, and yeah. They read about it in Spin Magazine. Uh-huh. Um, Spin Magazine, there was an article that talked about how musicians were in Second Life, and what they would do is they'd create an avatar, and they would um, like stream concerts from their home studio to people in Second Life who Whoa. also created avatars. And these people were all over the world. Um, so my aunt and uncle told me, or they went into it, and they told me about it one day day when we all hung out and they're like oh my god we met an artist in person <laughs> and I was That's like so cool. you know and in person yeah mean, you know right, in quotes yeah. meaning their avatar right. and they're like they're gonna do a mural for us in our virtual home and I was kind of I was intrigued so yeah. I created an avatar and like the first week I was there my aunt took me shopping and when you create an avatar it's like a 3d representation of yourself yeah and you can be anything you want and you know I went in thinking you know well god gosh, I'm going to, you know, look gorgeous. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, <laughs> so right? I got, you know, my avatar was tall, thin, blonde, you know, um, the whole shebang. Yeah. The, you you just know, went for it. Barbie. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, and I also like had a virtual home and what I did was I uploaded, um, photos of my paintings, like digital photos of my paintings into second life. And I opened an art gallery in Second Life. Yeah. So I actually sold digital, like, virtual copies of my art yeah, and there's to people a in Second Life. in Second yes. Life, right? And yep. so you're, now you're clocking dimes in yeah. Second Life, right? On. It was, I mean, it, I think it came out to, like, 267, they were called Lindens, um, to one U.S. dollar. And, you know, when I started, I'd sell my paintings for, like, 300 Lindens, so I'd make a dollar, you yeah. know, on a virtual copy, and I still had the original at home. Right. But I ended up selling a few originals to people who saw them in Second Life, too. Whoa. Which was really cool. Whoa. And I even that had um, an exhibition at one point that I sold limited edition, like virtual copies. So, you know, just like you do in real life. Yeah. And I think I made like $150 from that. Wow. From not even selling like the original. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> but I do want to yeah. transition a little bit into your work now. Like, what is your practice like? You know, like, let's get into that part yeah. a little bit. And then I want to get into, like, the PR stuff in yeah. a minute, too. So, yeah. like... Well, and it's a good transition because Second Life influenced everything I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, How so? Well, I got when I got my master's or when I did my thesis in studio art, um, you know, Samantha, I, she was amazing. She... Um, 
you know, we were talking a lot about Second Life and what I did there. And, you know, I told her I uploaded my paintings in there and sold them. And so I wanted to do something around my thesis with that. And even in art history, I had wanted to write my thesis on Second Life because it was such like this cutting edge platform for artists. It, you mm-hmm. know, I knew that there was something there. And then yeah, I transferred nobody else to was really working at exactly. it in, a, in an academic kind of a yeah, way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, I talked to Samantha and she, you know, and so I was thinking it, it would have something to do with my paintings. And she, you know, started looking at all these photos of through Second Life's like snapshots and they're, you know, um, high resolution, high resolution sla- sna- <laughs> snapshots. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, she saw my avatar who's this tall, thin, you know, my ideal self is right. what I used to say. Uh-huh. And she asked me why does your avatar look like that and so I never thought about it consciously before I just thought well that's what I want to look like yeah you know it's banging <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> um I always like I you know second life like there's so many different sides to second life there's um you know I, because you can be what you want I mean there's women with like huge breasts and you know yeah. huge butts and, you know I mean yeah no and no, I'm sure just, there's yeah. just every kind right yeah. there there's like the real athletic types and yeah. like everything yeah. I'm sure and I I always wanted to stay classy. So I always, you know, um, yeah, you know, I was tall and blonde and, you know, I kind of had big boobs, but, um, <laughs> you know, but in, not a, but that, in a cool way. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> but I always wore like classy clothing and, you know, nothing like BDSM type, you know, yeah, like yeah, a yeah, lot of people yeah, would wear. Yeah. And, um, but, so at the same time that she, that I was, she was asking me this, um, I realized I had an eating disorder. So I kind of, a lot of stuff happened, um, around the same time. And so I was going to counseling and, you know, kind of working on ideas of body image. Mm -hmm. And so it was perfect. You know, I started writing in a journal about it and, you know, started really questioning, well, why do I want to look like this? And so it, even though it was second life, it also, it carried over into real life and, you know, my thinking about all of that. And so, um, so my thesis for my thesis, I actually compared myself with my avatar and, um, for like three months before, no more than that. Cause it was 159 days. Um, what I, well, I was, as I was researching my thesis, um, I read a study from Stanford that said your avatar, um, affects you in real life. Like, yeah. Okay. There, so they did studies where they actually had somebody in front of a computer watching their avatar in a treadmill and it kind of made the person want to exercise whoa yeah there was whoa. something about that it goes deeper than that but um so i was researching that and so i i really thought does my avatar's name is gracie gracie kendall and so i was thinking does she influence me um, so what I did was bef- for my thesis, um, I took a picture of myself and my avatar every day and I started creating comics. So speaking of like Pulp Fiction type stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I, the comics, like the first comics were we were doing the same things, um, like exercising. So I'd go out and take a picture of myself exercising and I'd take a picture of her in Second Life exercising. So I wanted to see if like how that study really worked, you know, okay. if she did influence me, if I wanted to change myself in real life and I think that was kind of the crux of it was did is she changing me in real life Mm -hmm. and it's funny because just this moment she may not have changed me physically but like like I said when we started everything I learned in second life has has definitely um made me who I am today you know as far as like my business and an art being an artist and things like that so I see revelation so are you interested in in the interface between technology and art in other kinds of ways as Absolutely. Well. So how's that come um, out? Well, so with Second Life, what I did was um, for my thesis. So the, the project, the photos together mm-hmm. were, it was 159 days, and I ended up creating comics. So we had this conversation um, where, you know, Gracie ended up being like that id and ego that kind of sit on your yeah. shoulder, my cheerleader, and I would have a conversation with her. And like my professor, Samantha, actually, she saw these in the photo. She's like, you guys are having this conversation even before words were there. And so I started thinking about it, and she's like, write down what she would say to you. And so I did, and then it ended up being visual 
visual in comics and um, and it was a really, really interesting um, project. And I always said that I hate photos of myself. Um, you know, maybe not so much now, but doing that project, taking a photo of myself for 158 or 159 days, towards, you know, the middle to the end, I was like, oh, screw it. I don't care what I look like. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to take the photo. <laughs> so, you know, now it's like, you know, especially going to art openings, we get photos taken all the time and yeah. some of them aren't so flattering. And I'm like, you know, oh, that's yeah. how people see me. I'm like, you know, yeah. oh, well, it's going to be out there. I'm not going to complain. Yeah. That's it. That's how I am. Yeah, so, yep. yeah. So for my thesis, um, what I did was I actually ended up transforming into my avatar um, because I'm definitely Definitely, it was part of it, or the whole thing was the intersection or the blurring the line between like the virtual and physical worlds. Yeah. So um, my hair, I used to have hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, it used to be blonde and it was shoulder length and it was like all in length and uh, it was dark blonde. Yeah. And so, um, and Gracie was platinum blonde, kind of curly. And um, so, did you go so there? Did you, did you? Bleach the hair out all the way and do the I whole did. thing. Yeah. Um, I have a video of it. So I and I even got my nose pierced. It's I don't have it pierced anymore, but I got my nose pierced like she did, and we documented the whole thing. I went shopping to buy clothes that she would wear, um, or that I. Well, it, it was yeah. It was I learned a lot from the, that whole experience. But yeah. um, and I even had an art show, had a solo show up at the time. So you know, just like she would in Second Life. So I went and took pictures there, and we did a video, <sighs> like a ten minute video was documentary. The show her work from Second Life. No, it was my paintings. So. But for my thesis, um, for the exhibition at CSUN, what I did was I had three portraits of me transforming into her. So like a before, middle, and after. Yeah. And then she also transformed into me. So in Second Life, you know, she started out, you know, my ideal self. Yeah. And then she got heavier because, you know, I am overweight and I'm shorter. And um, so she actually transformed into me. Wow. So it was, it's really, so I had those six portraits up on the wall. And then I had the video um documentary that we created of me transforming into her and in the video the documentary I talked about how I felt about it you yeah. know I wanted yeah. I thought I wanted to be her this ideal person and after transforming into her I realized it's kind of about the balance it you know um yeah I mean and that was how long ago was that now that was seven years ago yeah I guess it was seven years ago now but um but yeah it was all about the balance and you know I mean I I still have an eating disorder that I'm working through yeah. um I'm still working through body image issues I'm still overweight I'm yeah. still you know all of these things okay so and <laughs> um, you're, you're still working through all of that stuff yeah. and yeah. it's um, and and what about the work what what about the most recent stuff like that? How is that? How is that? Mm. It, it, does it still influence? Does it not influence? Does like yeah? Is there like a progression that you feel like you're still working on? Kind of yeah right. Currently, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but, <laughs> we were um, doing some stuff with and, wigs though. Yeah no, I was. Um, Talk about that and, stuff for a minute. Yeah, because that that's interesting stuff. Oh cool, thanks. So what? Well, and uh, so you kind of get an idea of the story. Um, you know, it, I have always been interested in, like I said, blurring that line between the virtual and the physical worlds. Mm -hmm. I had a show at Los Angeles Art Association, a solo show in 2012, where um, I transformed the whole gallery into a 1920s dining room, and I had avatar portraits on the wall. So I actually did a project in Second Life called A Thousand, uh, a thousand Avatars, where I actually invited people, or invited, yeah, other people in their avatars to have a portrait taken, and I published two books. I self-published two books um, with a thousand avatars each. So it ended up being 2000. So in the gallery, um, I hung about 112 of those portraits on the wall. And um, what I did was we had a dinner party opening night and we had a screen at the end of the table with Second Life projected on the screen. And we had dinner with people in Second Life. Oh, wow. So the table extended into Second Life and the Second Life space was also 1920s. And it was a mirror image of the ver of the real life wow. space. I mean, that's it was cool. What, what's involved just in creating that that kind of a piece for me? Just wow. 
It's well, so far beyond let's let's paint on canvas and yeah, hang it on a wall because yeah. like there's so much infrastructure that goes on, so much organization, so much just yeah. I mean actually I kinda tripped out a little bit when you just said a hundred and twenty port on the wall yeah, alone. Like yeah. that's like pe- people don't understand what kind of a nightmare that is to hang. Yeah. And well, was that in a grid system? And it like, was salon style, and so luckily salon style. the gallery had installers that did it, and Thank they God. did an amazing job. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I had to paint the gallery because the gallery walls were white, so I painted them like brown and tan, like uh, two tone. Okay. I had to buy all the furniture because it was 1920s. Yeah. I wanted it to kind of be reminiscent of Gertrude Stein, yeah. and I wanted to talk about the idea of art communities uh-huh. because Second Life is an art community, and yeah. it's funny I always forget to talk about this, but that's all. Also, where I got kind of not the idea, but it expanded my views of what art community is, and that's what I'm, you know, very much into now. Yeah. And so, Second Life is, is its own art community, and it helped me be part of that and helped me bring that into real life too. So I wanted to talk about that. So I was kind of mimicking Gertrude Stein's, you know, from 1920s Paris. I'm like her living room or her dining room, yeah. you know, the parties that they used to yes. have and the charm circle. And yeah, because so, we're fans too, right? Yeah. We're artists, but we're fans yeah. of art. Exactly. And I love, I love that. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm so. so happy to hear you say that. You know what? There's a lot of artists out there who are very... Um, they don't want to mention other artists. I know. They, they, I know. they don't want like they don't want to almost deflect attention away from themselves onto other artists. I feel the opposite way. I'm so happy to hear yeah. that you do too. Like we have I'm to such support a fan, each other. You know. I know. And like and yeah, and, and I actually think that it works in the opposite as well. I think I think I think if you kind of stay cloistered and don't talk about other artists or with other artists and you're trying to just create this like um the walled city idea but it's yeah. just around you and your art i think it's um it's 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 insular and it, it you know isolates you from what you're actually trying to do which is hopefully communicate and get yeah. the work out there and yeah get, you know yeah and that's kind of like it's what we're about thing. over here a little bit too yeah. it's like we're trying to reach out to everybody we yeah. get, you know we can we can find and get them on our podcast and make the you know like give us more of a community feeling yeah so, well, Hopefully we'll get some I of those think, hermits and we'll draw them yeah, out a little yeah. bit. <laughs> um, but so, you know, you were asking like what went into the exhibition, mm-hmm. you know, and one of the reasons I started PR was because of this exhibition too. Um, oh, wow. I, um, you know, I mean, I had to buy all the furniture. I went to antique stores. I went to Craigslist. I went to thrift shops because, you know, 1920s yeah, furniture, yeah. like all the yeah. dishes, you know, everything that was involved. And you're trying to make it happen on a budget because yes. everything yeah. has a budget. I don't even remember how I paid for it. <laughs> I think each page, it was paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I didn't know at the time. I didn't have a planned budget. I just knew I needed this so you I bought gotta it. Do it. You yeah. know, that's, and that's unfortunately, well, uh, no, it's not unfortunate. It's just kind of how I run my life anyway. But, um, and I, I think a me. lot of artists are like yeah. that. You have a, yeah. you, you have a need to get this out there and it's going to happen. And that's exactly, yeah, it's, it's rough on the other people around us. I've heard they yeah. tell me, yeah, <laughs> the other people <laughs> in my life tell me like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, um, so after that, um, exhibition, which the exhibition was great. The opening night was wonderful. It, you know, it was so fun and I didn't do any PR for it. And so, and I should have, because it was a cutting edge show. It should have gotten a lot of press. And so I learned my lesson, <laughs> you know, that's kind of how, how my and then PR after that, started. Did you start breaking but, it down in your mind or like, how did the, and then you're like, I got to really look into this and see yeah. how do I get the word out next time? Yeah. Yeah, so I started taking classes and workshops on the business of art. And there started are started reading there are a lot a few of books. Of them out and there, yeah. yeah, no, there's great. And, and everybody there's, has there's, their there's own. There's ones on take. law. Yep. There's, I mean, oh, tons. A great resource for that kind of thing. And this is like some, I like to mention resources on this podcast too, so that people can take advantage of them. But yeah. LA Culture Net's a good one. They're I mean, great. if you're just getting into the art world and the art scene, there's yeah. a Yahoo email group it couldn't be more simple and low tech la culture net look them up online they have a totally simple set of steps to sign up for it and just start getting these emails and they will um they'll give you like it's a thing where you just go through it and maybe that day 
you don't have any that pertain to you. Yeah. And then the next yeah. day, there's calls for submissions for shows you want to be in. There's jobs yep. that you want to have. There's, you know. Exactly. Yeah, so a lot of it will be like, we're going to get that airplane <laughs> thing for a minute here. But I mean, there, there's references for every part of the art world. There's stuff in there for dance, for vocal, for fine art painters, sculptors, and it's it's job postings. It's all kinds yeah. of things. So look that up, They're LA great. Culture Net. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Um, so for my art practice, you know, I wanted to continue to look into blurring the line between the virtual and the real world and, um, you know, and what that meant. And I mean, we, you know, a lot of people are, oh, there's that quote, actually. I, it's that's something okay. about, um, yeah, um, reality is an illusion. I mean, basically. And I think I used that quote, like, when I wrote my thesis, you mm. know, talking about what is reality, you know, what is fantasy, what is the virtual? Mm. You know, so many people live in second life and create, like, because of the economy, because of everything, they create lives there. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, I, I went back and forth, you know, because, I mean, eh, that's a whole other story. But <laughs> um, so I was interested in that, you know, that line and what happens there. And um, so... I, because I uploaded my paintings into Second Life, I, and also because of my work with body image, um, I wanted to change my avatar. So I wanted to make her like less, um, you know, the blonde bombshell. Mm -hmm. So what I did was, because in Second Life, you could be anything you want. You could be a box if you want. You sure. could be a horse. You could awesome. be a dragon. You could be, you know, a woman if you're a man. You could be a man if you're a woman. I mean, sure, you could course, be anything. Yeah. You don't have to be, I mean, you kind of have to be something, but... Um, um, you know, you could be anything. So I took one of my, one of my paintings and I put it as a texture on my skin. Mm -hmm. So I had, all I had was my body and the skin. Whoa, so, Japan. which was my abstract painting. Cool. And, um, and it, I mean, it, it was great. I saw when I did that, I was just experimenting and I, yeah. you know, experimentation is so important in art. Sure. Um, I just saw that happen and I'm like, oh my God, that, you know, I need to do that, that it's changing so much about everything. So um, I started to I started a project called a comfortable skin and it talks about, you know, being comfortable in your own skin. What does that mean to you? You know, are you am I? And, you know, because I I always said I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. So kind of what whatever that idea meant. And so mm -hmm. by using the painting as my skin on my avatar, that kind of started that conversation. So what I did was um, I wanted to bring that into real life. So I decided to paint mannequins, you know, in the same way that I paint my paintings. And yeah. my paintings are all drips or my abstract paintings were drips and pores and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I started painting the mannequins and the drips and pores. And and then um, I, and I called them avatars. And, you know, because I wanted to it was it was meant to be an avatar from Second Life that was brought to real life. And um, so then I started playing with Photoshop and I'd take the mannequins out into the city and take pictures of them in different places. Okay. Um, it started out like in the arts district. So was the final, was the, was the final piece always sculptural or was it always photographic or was it a mix or? A mix, I think. And it's hard to say final because the, you know, the project is still it's going just on so evolving and it's all not the time. even, yeah. yeah, it's the mannequins. Um, they're like all cut up. <laughs> So, yeah, just to give there you a little a spoiler, speaking of spoilers. There was a virtual um, murder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How did the massacre happen? <laughs> I mean, you got to share now. We can't leave yeah, that hanging out definitely. there. Definitely. Um, well, you know, I started to think because, you know, even mannequins, like I got all the mannequins on Amazon. It's so easy to buy. I bought, buy everything on Amazon. Sure. And, and um, delivered to your house. I know. By drone. No. I got Prime <laughs> for sure. hundred percent. I know. Totally. Get it here right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, these mannequins come in these huge boxes. And at the time I lived like on the third floor. So it was nice. I'd come home and the box would be right in front of the front door. I wouldn't have to pick it up or it was great. Yeah. And so, um, but they're mannequins. They're all thin. You know, they're all the ideal quote, ideal, or whatever that means. Ideal. Self, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I painted them and it was a cool project. It was like an experiment to see, you know, how that worked. And, you know, I started questioning because I'm always questioning my work. I'm always trying to think about what is the intent? Does the message get across? Oh, and, yeah. you That's know, the I mean, they're one. thin, you yeah. know, yes, the message as far as blurring the line between the virtual and real, you know, kind of 
um, that message comes out. But like, what about body image and what about, you know, my identity and how does that work? And so, and then I started thinking because so many people used to tell me my, or tell me my paintings are beautiful. You Uh know, they're really bright colors and, and my work is all about kind of, um, uh, deconstructing ideas of beauty. You know, what does that mean? And cause that's why I have a, you know, an eating disorder. That's why body image is so um, important or that's why I concentrate on it because of, you know, the ways that the media distorts beauty and, you know, yeah. television and the movies distort beauty. And yeah. we're getting um, bombarded by it all the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Like, Advertising. And not, yeah. And not just, not just, uh, necessarily body image or personality image there's all kinds of messages that were sent all the time in subtle and not so subtle ways of trying to control behaviors yeah. control looks control all kinds of things yeah yeah all exactly. kinds of systems of control out there yep so i started you know I've always thought about plastic surgery and what, you know, women and men go through to be beautiful, you know, cutting up the body. I mean, you know, I'm dangerous. I know. Oh, definitely. I know. I mean, you know, I look at artists like Orion, uh, Orion, no, Orion, is that her name? Or Orly? Oh my gosh. Orlan. Oh, Orlan? Okay. Yeah. Yes. And I'm sorry. I'm probably, I know it's right there. Or I think no, it's no, Orlan. You can't yes. be worse than me. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> like I'm literally yeah. I'm doing an art podcast and I blank on artist names all the yeah. time. <laughs> I know, and they're right Don't there. Worry. I know them. You know what? Everyone but. out there is identifying with us right now. Yeah. They're still like, oh, my God, I hate it. And it's like Rembrandt. They're trying to think of Rembrandt. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's yeah. fine. Like, no, exactly. It happens to everyone. Yeah. But, like, Jenny Sauvel, um, you know, painted about plastic surgery, and her paintings are amazing. But, um, so, you know, other artists have dealt with this. And so I, you know, I asked myself, does my work really get across, you know, the ideas that I'm talking about with body image and beauty and what is beauty and, you know, all of that stuff. And, um, so I started to, well, I mean, there, there's like a longer story. I started to cut up my paintings. So I cut all of my paintings off the stretcher bars Mm -hmm. and I mean, I hung them on clothes on hangers and Mm -hmm. on clothes Mm -hmm. racks Mm -hmm. because I realized like somebody had asked me what the connection between my paintings and second life is. That was like, that it, no, this I is went a to super, a portfolio I like this, review. This display, yes. yeah, aesthetic. This is cool. And yeah. so, um, you know, I mean, when I first did, painted my paintings, there wasn't a connection because they came first. Yeah. But I wanted there to be a connection. You know, I didn't want them to just stand alone as paintings, even though I had sold a lot. You know, they're easy to hang over the couch and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, but I wanted it to be more conceptual. I wanted to push it further. So um, I cut them off the stretcher bars and hung them on hangers, and I called them skins you know because they were the skins that I created in Second Life yeah and so you know I had a couple of installations that I did at galleries with the skins and um and then they kind of sat there and I'm like yeah but you know there's so many connotations with skin like it could come off as macabre you know as like and I didn't really want that I wanted the message about beauty to come across more and so like I put them aside and they sat there for a while and then one day I and I don't even remember exactly how it happened, but I decided to cut them up. So I cut my paintings up into 12 by 12 inch squares and, um, and I liked what I was doing and I ended up creating a sculpture. So it's like a 12 by 12 by 12 inch sculpture of my paintings. Cause I wanted to reconstruct them into yeah. to a different beauty yeah. into something else. So that's kind of what I was thinking. So then I started cutting up more of my artwork. Yeah. And, um, at the time I had also painted, um, yet yeah, like young girls vanities. Mm-hmm. So little girls, like there's Disney vanities and mm-hmm. Disney kitchens mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and I wanted to show that young girls from a pretty, or from a young age are taught that being pretty is more important, you know, like the whole Disney princess thing. And, you know, I mean, because they are brought up that way. So I wanted to have a conversation about that. So I painted those in my abstract style. And so those with the avatars, I had a big show with them. And, you know, I'd still get comments. Oh, those are so pretty. My little girl would love that, you know, or the mannequins, you know, all those are so beautiful. And it's like, so it was flying over some of the the audience's head a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is a question I got to ask you because it really pertains to that. Yeah. How much of message are you like, okay. As the artist, how much do you feel responsible 
for the way the audience perceives the work? Um, I mean, well, for my work personally, I feel very responsible. I mean, I, you know, because I have an important message that I'm trying to relay and, you know, and I want to maybe change people's minds or, yeah. you know, make them think about what does being pretty mean? Why do you need to be beautiful? You know, I mean, and to kind of open their minds to when they see an advertisement to think differently about it. And when that so, doesn't happen, maybe they're not getting the, the, whole art world context of this thing when that doesn't happen do you feel like you then have to change the way you're doing thing to access everybody like how accessible how inclusive for you yeah does your work need to be for me personally i um you know, I mean, I want to make it accessible to the art world. I'm not as concerned with the public. So, and there's kind of a, a better example of that with my brand new work that has come out of all of this. Um, you know, I, you know, of course, you know, everybody wants to sell their work. And of course, if I sold it, you know, and made some money, I'd be happy. But that's not my concern. My Excuse me. Um, my concern is, you know, like I said, the message and and to create, you know, because I have this history of, you know, academia and art history. Yeah. And, you know, I so I want to be part of the art history conversation, too. You know, I want to talk about, you know, conceptual art and um, and, you know, talk about the artists that influence me. So I'm kind of in that camp of the art his or like the art camp versus the public camp when yeah. it comes to that. So do you believe mm -hmm. that sales give you a bigger platform? Um, no, no. I mean, it depends on who the sales to. If it's through to like the Broads or sure. the Marcianos yeah. or something like that, then yeah. yeah. But, you know, I live at the brewery and we have our brewery art walk twice a year. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's mostly there's 10 to 15,000 people that are mostly from the public. You know, there's maybe one or two percent that are from the art world, yeah. you know, maybe yeah. five percent that are artists. Yeah. But they come in and they look at the pretty pictures. You know, yeah. they look at my loft. <laughs> they look at where we live. They look at the architecture. Yeah, and then they have that fantasy. You know? yeah. 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 They think everything will be better if they were just an artist and they would just sit around all day and yeah. paint their yeah. paintings <laughs> and then probably go to groovy restaurants at night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we do have barbers at the brewery where a lot of us hang out. So, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, I'm not saying they're not fun no, stuff. No, no, I'm not, definitely. I'm no, not, I love that life. No, that, <laughs> no. that, that, that's cool and stuff, but that's not all it is. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, they like pictures that are going to hang over their couch. You mm. know, the majority of people that go there. Um, it There's, you know, I mean, there's so many le different levels to the art world. And I talk about this with my artists all the time. Every artist has a different path. Every, you know... Every there's so many different levels of collectors. Truth, you can't say there. that enough times. Yeah, it really yeah. takes a long time to sink in, though, doesn't it? It does. That's like it one does. of those tr very true things about the art world that's so hard for new artists to grasp. I yeah. think it's just all like, okay, there's every path, but for real, just how do I do it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I, no, I can't exactly. tell you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for real. I can't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can only say how you do it. Yeah, exactly. Really. Well, and I mean, my job is, you know, I'm a support network for artists. So mm -hmm. I kind of have to know what's going on at each of those levels to be able to help the artists find their path. So, and it's, you know, luckily I'm able to do that. I think, um, you know, even though my work is more like, you know, the towards the art history, you know, kind of academic side. Yeah, we'll wait. take a take an airplane pause again. Oh, no. I think it would be fun for someone who doesn't know me, which is like only people listening to this are people who know me personally. But like, if they didn't know me, maybe they would like try to be able to piece together where I live based on I know, uh, based, I know, huh? based on airplane noises. Yeah, yeah. Based Might on be a fun detective direction. thing. Don't don't say. I All right, Christine, don't yeah, say. I won't. <laughs> All right, so getting back to it, I'm sorry. Yeah. So you feel like your work's more in the art historical vein of things. Yeah, or the you know, um, I guess, you know, I don't know. That's probably one. And what yeah. about the artists that you represent? They're a mixture. Um, you know, it, I mean, I have painters, I have installation artists, I have photographers, I have, and they all have their different paths yeah. and it's really cool, you know, trying to help them navigate those paths. Yeah. And I mean, it's a learning experience for me too. 
you know, trying to, um, I go to workshops still and panels and, you know, talk to curators and gallerists all the time to figure out, you know, or to try to help gauge, you know, well, what should we do to get to that path or even sales? I mean, we don't handle sales at all, um, but I try to find the resources to help with sales yeah. or grants, you know, because I mean, sales, especially well over the summer, things are slow, but in the, you know, the art world, um, in, in general, things are slow. Sales are slow. Yeah. Um, you know, and so it's tough. So, you know, artists need, um, you know, I mean, artists need money, of course, yeah. <laughs> to create work. So, yeah. you know, I try to find grants to help my artists and, you know, things like that. Well, that you just accidentally segued <laughs> I know. right I know. into side hustles. <laughs> you just walked right into it. Oh, no. You know, actually, before we get into side hustles, I want to I want to talk a tiny bit about art and cake and about shoebox like how do they work how do they work for you just kind of like more of like a nuts and bolts art yeah. art world the art world's yeah. a business everybody big shocker i know you've heard this before but it's real just like every artist is different they all have their own path yeah. let that yeah. sink in for a minute the art world's a business everyone let that sink in for yeah. a minute okay yeah. like so um you also run Shoebox, which is a PR firm that yeah. represents artists. Uh, I don't know if you have any art organizations, though. You do have some galleries, but um, uh, then then there's Art and Cake, which mm -hmm. is the magazine. So let's let's talk about those two things yeah. a little bit. Um, so just kind of to bring it for full circle, Shoebox PR has been uh, three and a half years old and, um, I was working in the emergency room up until two years ago. Mm -hmm. So I was, um, working full time in the ER and running Shoebox part time and they switched all my hours at the hospital. And I'm like, you know, it's now or never, I need to quit and yeah. take Shoebox full time. Yeah. So I did. And that, that was, that's history. Yeah. But, um, that was a big watershed moment though. Yeah, it was. That was a gut it check. Was. Yeah. And that was like, <laughs> oh, insurance is a thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Insurance, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obamacare. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know, but that's a whole started. other discussion. I know, I know. Totally. I know. I've been there. I've been, a, <laughs> I know. I've been on it. I've been on it. Yep, yep. Um, but no, definitely. And I mean, I didn't have savings. You know, I didn't have anything. I was just like... You just I gotta had do the it. guts to take a yeah. risk. Yeah. yeah, and I did it. And so, you know, it's paid off. I mean, it's stressful because it's freelance. Yeah. You know, anything freelance is stressful. Um, but it's amazing. It's, you know, I set my own hours. I, you know, I mean, and my own hours, meaning like I work, you know. 24 hours a day. Seven, yeah, <laughs> basically <laughs> seven days a week, yeah. you know. I've been talking to people recently about the me time. You know, what yeah. does that mean? And that's uh. why we went to the beach today. <laughs> so that's, you know, getting, because you have to recharge, you know, you have to like do that. But, um, but no, it's been, you know, I mean, I'm doing what I love and that's being in the art world and meeting people and, you know, I'm getting involved. I'm, you know, getting in different organizations and helping out. And so what we, we started out doing, um, was promoting exhibitions. So if like an artist had an exhibit or like there was some event coming up, we would promote that and we'd help get press. We'd share it all over social media. Um, we would do calendar listings and you know, whatever we could to you help believe in email too. Yes, you absolutely. Yeah, you just, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, because not everybody's, I know several artists who have left Facebook. Not yeah. everybody's on social media. So you, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm totally in Instagram oh, yeah. now and I'm yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. I'm happier. <laughs> My, yeah. People give me less of a hard time, you know? <laughs> less trolls on Instagram, I think. Yeah. Probably. I think so. But, yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. more, it's better for visual artists, I feel like, too. Just because there's just like, it's it's really just like that squirrel. It's yeah. just consuming art and it's so pleasurable. It is, <laughs> but Facebook um, is a community. Yeah. And, and you know, Instagram so is shorter format. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was not happy with like the shortness of format with any of those things. That's how this, the whole yeah. podcast thing yeah. came about. No, exactly. Because we get to chop it up out here. We get to get yeah. into a real conversation about, you know, real stuff and we can get in depth about your work and we can kind of like have a conversation that goes places. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. 
Um, so, um, so you were promoting, yeah, exhibitions and events. And then when I, um, went full time, I needed a new structure. So I took on artists on retainer. So, um, we work with them once month to month and we run their social media. We, um, promote their solo shows. We, I send them like, well, we're a support network. So I consider, I don't consider myself a publicist. And even though, um, we do PR, I feel like we're not the regular PR company because I, I'm an artist, my assistants are artists, mm-hmm. so we know what artists need. Yeah. So I'm able to um, create opportunities for my artists and um, and give them the resources that they need, you know, whether it's um, sending calls for art. You know, I research calls for art yeah. and grants yeah. and residencies, yeah. and I send them a list that they do have to apply for. So we also don't charge as much as a regular PR company because it's like a collaboration, Yeah, and um, which I think is important. And that's good for the people that may not to afford the higher end PR companies, yeah. you know, but want something a little more. Yeah, so, but there were like all super shy artists and we need... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm one, I have I have no idea about your business and what you do <laughs> at all. Like I just, I'm the worst. <laughs> yeah. And that, you know, I mean, luckily because I have the administrative background, I'm like both right and left brain. So I'm I'm able to do that, you know, the business side of it. Oh, that's so, cool. You're like ambidextrous, but in your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So, you know, it's hard to get press. It's, you know, there aren't as many um, like Los Angeles centric art magazines out here. Yes. And there's a few great ones, you know, Artillery. Um, unfortunately, Art Limited just, you know, stopped production, which, you know, was like, which sucks because they were so great. But there's Carla, there's Art Scene, you know, so there's a few, you know, really good ones. Um, but even, you know, getting in the LA Times, getting into anything is so hard. Yeah. And so I I wanted to it's about creating opportunities Mm -hmm. so um i already like would share um like interviews and things on the website so i was like you know i should like make this official and make this like an art magazine so i got the domain name a friend of mine and i you know kind of um we talked about names and art and cake you know it was perfect i don't you know and I love ever it. since then i know I'm now we have fan. cake at openings and stuff it's great i it's don't know a, why I, I i associate with so many other la things too i don't know why but it just fits right in yeah, there. Yeah, I know. Well, there's a really great um, website. So there's a creative um, aspect to this PR thing. I think you just proved it. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So that's where the, um, I, I think maybe it's a little less, I don't know the difference between right and left brain, but I think it's a little less analytical than what you're thinking. Yeah. I think there's more creativity yeah. in this PR thing because like right now, just when you're talking, you're literally just things are coming to you and it seems like a creative Today's a good day. There's days where I can't think of anything. (laughs) So, (laughs) but uh, I shouldn't say that. Or maybe bad PR. No, God, (laughs) I know. I know. What am I doing? I I think you're just being real. I think that's. I think that's the best thing you can possibly be anywhere, anytime. Like, I think everyone can spot pretense really easily. Yeah. And it just shuts everything down. I think the fa- I, I think you're successful because you're real. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And you know, I mean, we we definitely try to be authentic and genuine on our social media when we run our artist social media. Um, yeah, you people know, everywhere. are more savvy now. It's, they can spot out exactly, all that, you know. exactly. The noise. There's so much noise that yeah. it's like it's almost when you see people being honest, it's like, oh wow, this is great. Let me yeah. see some more. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I, you know, because I have my degree in art history too, I wanted to be part of the art conversation. So by creating the art magazine, that kind of helped me, you know, get in there. I mean, there's a few other reasons because it's hard to get press. Um, you know, I, um, you know, I wanted to create more opportunity for, you know, whether it's galleries, whether it's artists, even art writers, because I pay my writers. So I'm giving them work, you know, which I think is great. I wish I could pay them more. But, you know, you always wish that. Sure. But maybe if I get a sponsor, maybe JetBlue Jet will <laughs> sponsor me, too. <laughs> but, um, I mean, what, what, what were some of the, the big moments that, that you really enjoyed in, in Art and Cake and doing that and in publishing? And were there, like, was there a big moment there that was, like, you, you broke some artist or, some, you know, or there was a connection that was made or you did some, you know what I mean? What yeah. was that? Because I enjoy it. Yeah. I don't know if there was one particular moment. Um, 
I, you know, it, I mean, I'm, you know, everything I do and I'm very in, inspired by Sharon Loudon. Um, I don't know if you're familiar. She wrote the books, um, living and sustaining a creative life and the artist is cultural producer. And, um, and we've met her and she's told just you about amazing. Your pens and pencils, kids. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> she's just, she does webinars, yeah. um, through creative capital. And so she talks about like that artists today are not just like creating work, you know, they're doing so many different things. Like, you know, I'm, my art isn't just the paintings or isn't just the mannequins or isn't just, you know, that stuff, but it's also like art and cake is my art and shoebox PR is a part of my art. And I also have an experimental art space called shoebox projects. That's also my art. So this is like, this is all me being creative, you know, doing all this. So like with art and cake, we actually just turned a year old on July 9th. So, um, which, you know, was really, really cool. And I never, we all were like, it's a year old already. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, um, with, you know, it's, yeah, it's great. Um, but in it's everything so I do, it has, and it, you know, it keeps growing, which is great. And now I'm trying to figure out how to monetize it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, you, it, the thing is, is that you're just onto something that people really need. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, definitely. And, and everybody in the art world, because, you know, as much as this is a talent of yours, it's not really a talent for most of ours. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot of help with it. Yeah. yeah. You know, like we were talking about at the beginning, um, whether it was recorded or not, I don't remember. We were talking about, you know, artist community and artist support. And, you know, with Art and Cake, I'm able to offer that support. Like I have just did my second um, studio um what did I call it? Studio, like artist studio photo essay. So I had like, I put a call out and artists sent me an image of their studio. So I posted it. I did like, there's, I've done two and each of them have like 40 or 50 studios and I put their name and website. So, you know, people can go and look at their work and um, so those are really, really cool. I love being able to do that and, you know, help artists, you know, get exposure that way, you know, help support them and, you know, kind of another resource that way. Yeah. Um, we did like one of our most popular um, posts was the Now Be Here. It was the women's, fo- the women artist photograph. I don't know if you remember yeah, hearing about that. Yeah. 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 It was at Hauser and Worth um, last year. Was it January? I think maybe January or something. Oh, was it last August? I don't know. Gosh, I guess maybe. So um, it was like on the spot. My, you know, another good friend of ours, Danny Dodge, um, she's a writer. She was a journalist before and she runs L.A. Art Opportunities, the Facebook group, which was a resource I was going to plug. Um, if you're an L.A. artist, you should be on this group because she posts calls for art. She posts grants and other people share this stuff, too. So it's L.A. Art Opportunity. Yeah, that's something like that. Yeah. Awesome. Another, if I was yeah. on Facebook, I'd be on top yeah. of it right now. <laughs> See, that's why See, you I know. need to be on I, 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 I kind of have to get on it. No, since I've I been know. off of it, you know the reality. I know, I've exactly. come into that thing where there's so many different, you know, there's there's opportunities that you miss out on yeah. because yeah. you didn't hear about it or whatever. One of my good friends from, um, from art school started a gallery space. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and we're going to have him on on the show. I'm not going to oh, cool. plug it this time, but we're, yeah. he's going to, he's going to be on and, um, two weeks i think oh great and um so that's juan capistron but we'll get into that more but he that uh i didn't hear about it because of face i wasn't on yeah. facebook and he did the whole entire thing through facebook oh, wow. and I, didn't, I didn't hear about it until like much af- yeah. later after it happened yeah. and i was you know that's why email is important Yes. Yep. That's that why is, we're we okay, use every so I found yeah. I don't know that <laughs> I don't I don't know if you can bear this out but this is just like a personal theory mm-hmm. of mine People love to look at art online. They buy through email. They they come to events and buy through email is what I've found. Like because there's so many collectors that are on the older side. Yeah. Aren't yeah. doing the, the social media. Yeah. I don't know. But so don't much. take my word yeah. for it because I don't I sell very little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <I'm> like <laughs> <laughs> I mean I know I have a friend in Austin who's an assemblage artist. Mm-hmm. Amazing assemblage artist. And like as soon as he puts a work up there, people buy it on Facebook. It's like, you know, th- prices are like three, four, five hundred bucks. Yeah, but his work um, is probably so much better than yeah. mine. Well, no. I, <laughs> don't say that. No, I'm serious. No. I'm honest. <laughs> like, I'll, I'm, I'll be real. People people on this show know. They, they can go on my side. Your it, work it is, is different. It is. It's totally yes. different. But it's like, um, I don't... Uh, 
I, I, I'm not even saying that it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to say, like, I don't know if sales are in me. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. And I'm kind of cool with it. Like, I've also sold some stuff and I've yeah. been happy about it, you know? I probably sold at least three or four dozen paintings on Facebook when I used to only have my abstract paintings before I cut them on off the canvas and before I cut them into 12 by 12 inch squares. Yeah. Um, I sold the paintings like I'd post them on Facebook and, you know, and I'd say this one's available or, you know, I'd put some information about it. And um, I shipped a couple to Japan and the UK and um, all over the US. Dang girl. From, yeah. I mean, Impressed. it's. You know, it's they say Instagram is the new art market, but I still think you have to be on Facebook, too. I mean, if you can. <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I've definitely followed some people and watched them blow up on Instagram. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's fun. It's yeah. all about, for me, it's all about the people who just, like, can do uh, art quickly. Yeah. And they post every day. Yeah. And yeah. They, they post some, like, and it's, like, people that I've seen blow up are people who are doing impressive technical work. Yes. Craftsmanship is Craftsmanship. important. Yeah. Definitely. So it, it's time. Yeah. It's time. Let's talk <laughs> about side hustles. Um, this is the part in the show where we like to talk about stuff that you've done in the past. It doesn't have to be funny, but a lot of times I noticed it is. Um, so oh, like, no. what, what, I mean, I mean, actually, just working in an ER was kind of that was an amazing one that you just you just mentioned. I mean, yeah. you, you already talked about like you started basically funding one of your businesses that you work on right now through that. Yeah. Which like for yeah. all artists, like I even consider like I consider teaching to be a side hustle, even yeah. though like I mean, that's how a lot of artists fund their art careers. So you don't have to be so dependent on sales. Exactly. And you can do work that you really want to do. Yeah. A lot of people teach. That's fine, you know? Well, I worked in the ER. Um, I also taught. I taught um, art history at Antelope Valley College and Pasadena City College. Oh, wow. So, um, you know, That's while cool. I've always working in the, the ER. That, that I've always thought that the community college thing would be awesome. It was. I loved I really, it. I, really, I went to community college for a bunch. Yeah. We covered yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I was eight years. I, I had the I best instructors, though. Yeah, Those same so instructors I. teach at the universities. Yeah. And it's Shout like, you know. Shout out to Brian know? Connolly and Paul Donaldson right now. If this <laughs> ever gets around to them, you guys are awesome. Oh, cool. <laughs> I mean, Cynthia Minette was my first painting teacher. She's the one who introduced me to the brewery, um, to the Art Walk. That was in 98. And now I live there in yeah. her building. <laughs> oh, that's so, so cool. And I know. Like, I and now she's here. actually one of my clients. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yep. Yeah, see, that's yep. how it works. It's just a big exactly. spider web out there. Exactly. So you ever yeah. do any, like, any one that you were just really regretted? Um, oh, gosh. Well, it's, I mean, I did, well, and that's a, I mean, it was an art job. When I was really young, I mean, in my 20s, I think, um, I worked for two weeks at the museum in Lancaster. It was the Museum of Art and History in Lancaster. Um, before it is, Never I mean, been. now it's like just the last few years it was rebuilt and it's a contemporary art ma art, art magazine, um, art museum. Andy yeah. Camponi runs it and she's doing an amazing job. Um, Samantha Fields, my mentor, is showing there right now, oh. I think actually through this weekend. Yeah, um, I learned so much. I've never even heard of this. No, a no. Museum it's an amazing out there museum. I did not know about. No, it's fantastic. Um, so before it was fantastic, <laughs> I worked there. That's when they used to show paintings of poppies and cows and, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, things like yeah. that. Yeah, I worked there, there for yeah. two weeks and um, and it just wasn't my thing. Like, I don't I don't even remember what I had to do. I think it was too quiet. <laughs> it was like, I mean, I don't, e I don't need. You need to communicate with folks. But you need yeah, to get out there, yeah. like whether it's virtual or real. Yeah. You need to get out there and yeah. communicate no, with definitely. folks. No, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Exactly. That's what you do. Exactly. I love delivering pizza, actually. It was, <laughs> I was the only girl. And so that was always cool. I was surrounded by all the guys. That's awesome. And, what um, city did you do that yeah, in? It was, was in Lancaster. Lancaster. No, it, I grew up in the Antelope Valley. So uh, thankfully, I got out of there. <laughs> but yeah, wow. no, it was uh, it Jonathan's was great. Jonathan's nodding his head. I just want to point that. I yeah. like to mention Jonathan in these podcasts because we're just we're we're such pals. But Jonathan yeah. is recording this right now, and he, he spent uh, 
a, a serious segment of time in Bakersfield. Oh, so you know. You totally yeah. know. He, know. he knows the Central <laughs> Valley. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, you know, I don't mind going up there every once in a while to the museum, but it's changed. And it's so conservative. It's like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm glad I'm here. I'm a city girl. I'm an L.A. Some of the best artists are geeks. Yeah, really, no, totally. I think that Van Gogh was a geek. I think, like, Probably. I think he anybody, watched Star Trek. Anybody... <laughs> <laughs> anybody I mean anybody that like holds up in the in the in the shack for that long and cuts their own ear off and all that stuff yeah. that's, that's geek activity yeah. in my opinion he and was I, probably I gonna try and transplant it like um, yeah, Stellark that, that's what I'm trying to yeah. say like I don't I, I, I don't think he was suicidal at all yeah. I think these were just like weird activities he was getting up to and stuff went wrong yep you know what I mean yeah. it's <laughs> I think we're going to yeah. rewrite that history. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> There's another plane that's going to go. Yeah. We're in, like, prime time for airplanes, Probably, apparently. yeah. Who is it? Is it JetBlue? Yay! Oh, for real this time. <laughs> it was actually JetBlue. You're not supposed to say that. It was for real last time, too. But remember, we talked about authenticity. <laughs> that's we have true. to stay that's there. Okay, like, most, okay. of this, most of this stuff has been UPS, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But uh, there's a fine line between authenticity and PR. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't say no, that. you've gotten into <laughs> something. Uh-oh. You've gotten into something now. <laughs> no, all PR is authentic, but you have to spin it authentically in a different direction. <laughs> or, well, I mean, also you want to frame it in a way where yeah. it might sound interesting. Yeah, like, no, exactly. That's exactly. kind of like, okay. That's also what I, I feel like that's how paintings operate. Like there has to be an initial seduction. Yeah. Yeah. You have to get the the audience at least interested enough. A lot of people do that through craft. We just we were talking about craft earlier. Yeah, a lot, like that's the seduction for a lot of yeah. people is yeah. is like uh, either how was this made or this is so incredible that someone has the talent to do this. That's why like like time lapse. Uh, videos of people drawing is so amazing because n- like a lot of people don't have that talent yeah. they don't understand that it's a skill it's draftsmanship you learn it you put a lot of hours into it and then it's this craft but yeah. it, that it, that initial thing is a seduction because people don't immediately understand how someone is able to do this incredible feat yeah. it, it looks like a magic trick so um, we did a, a studio visit with Marie Thibault in San Pedro and, you know, her work, she does um, kind of abstract paintings with a little bit of representation in it. And okay, I mean, she at the Angels Gate Cultural Center then? She's, no, no. No, okay. No, she has her own studio in her backyard. Okay, um, we print there as well. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, her paintings are huge. And, you know, you walk in and you're immersed in them. And, you know, I've seen them online, but it's not the same as seeing them in person. And then hearing her talk about them, talking about the layering and, you know, this element is, you know, these container, you know, containers from the, she paints a lot about like the industrial aspect of the um, ports, uh-huh. you know, the, yeah. so like the containers and, um, and then she talks about the color and the, you know, the transparencies that she uses and the photos and everything that she uses to prepare for these paintings. And I was getting goosebumps, like yes. listening to her yes. and just imagining I'm curating her in a show that I'm, I'm doing at Launch LA. And I didn't mean to plug that, but you know. no, that's fine. But, um, but I don't um, consider it a plug. Okay, we have good. 39 downloads, Christine. It's <laughs> not, you, it's that's not true. even, a, you can't count that as a plug. Hey, those 39 Nine people are talking. special. You never know who they are. That's true. Well, come on, you can't. I kind of do that. though. Well, like, I'm pretty sure it's true. like my cousin in Washington <laughs> and my best friend in Costa Mesa. Like, I'm pretty. Hi. Sure. <laughs> I know. Oh, oh my God! But, Could you give a shout out to um, David in Costa hi, Mesa? Hi, David in Costa Mesa. <laughs> <laughs> He's for sure gonna listen to this. <laughs> um, but like it, you know, every time I do a studio visit or every time I go to an artist talk, and what you're doing with these podcasts you know listening to an artist talk about their work and like getting to understand what 
you know, the what's behind it, what's underneath yeah. it. I mean, that like that gives you goosebumps. And that's why, you know, there's the high end collectors because they understand that, too. And that's what they collect. I mean, well, unless the artist has a name and they're collecting as, as an investment. But, um, you know, I mean, just to, or, like also like there's like there's bubbles in the art world. There's like no the hope that someone will, yeah. will get big yeah. in the future and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But like being in her studio and listening to her and. You know, I and like all of the artists that I know, just thinking about how their mind works. And, you know, my mind doesn't work like hers. My mind, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just fascinating, you know, just like a poet or just like a writer, you know, um, whether it's Jane Austen or, you know, um, Hunter Thomas or, you know, yeah. that's what. Yeah. I mean, I that's what I love about art. And that's what I love about artists. And that's why I want to support them, because, you know, they think differently and yeah. they, you know, they're they visualize like concepts and I, you know, I do the same thing, but you know, they just, the world around them in such a different way, you know, I don't know. I, you know, that's what I know. It it, it really does expand on everybody's idea of what this culture can be. Yeah. And we're not this society and this, you know, um, our artists create a context in which uh, we can think about ourselves in different kinds of groups and in no groups and in, you know, all kinds of ways. And that's yeah. that, I mean, that is literally the embodiment of freedom and just a more democratic way of being. And that's, uh, that's what, that's what I'm personally all about. Yeah. That's, that's what I've always just been drawn to. And art, and art is just fantastic at that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Totally. Okay. So, um, we're going to wrap things up with, yeah. the, with, with the, 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 with the challenge for us. Like, oh. who would you like to hear on our mm-hmm. podcast? Who would you like to challenge? You can say one name. You can say a hundred. We don't care. Like we're going to try to contact whoever you mentioned. Um, are you just looking for artists or art world? We Anybody are, in the art okay, world? Okay. So it could be a curator. It could be an artist. It could be a, um, gallery director, museum director. I uh, could be, they just have to be alive for us to interview. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like we appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course I have to mention my artists, you know, that I work with okay. on Shoebox and, you know, I have, I think 20 of them that are on my website. So I'll send you their emails, their contact information. Okay. Um, but also like Shana Nee Stambrot. Do you know Shana? No. Nope. Um, she's an art critic and writer. And I think she'd make a fun, another fun interview. Okay. Um, she's just, she's, she's like a rock star. She's actually in Hawaii right now. So I'm um, with Andy Camponi, who I mentioned earlier. They're Do you doing a workshop. The rock stars are always somewhere else. I know. Like no matter where you're at, they're somewhere That's else. True. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not that cool. And of course I have to mention Jennifer who's sitting next to me for, okay. you know, a future podcast, you know, and Danny Dodge who, um, re, you know, the LA art opportunities. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. she's a good one too. So, okay. <laughs> the, yeah. the gauntlet's been thrown down. Just want to say thank you so much for stopping by and, You're welcome. and, and being on this humblest of <laughs> podcasts ever, but all, but no, some great things um, begin humbly, and what we were, what in all honesty, I like to joke, but we really want to make this a a real resource and an archive of artists' voices and just everyone involved in the LA art scene, so that we can better get to know each other and. Um, hopefully you could just run down this art, this, this list of podcasts and just be just like, Oh my God, I want to hear from them. Oh my God, yeah. I want to hear from them. And just, you just like, it would be one of those like addictive things for some kid 20 years from now who just wants to be an artist and just be just like, Oh my God, <laughs> they were in the same room together. <laughs> like that would like, yeah. cause that's the kind of freak out that yeah. I have. Yeah. About yeah. about all kinds of artists all the time. And, you know, it's like when you had that moment, like, where were you when you realized that um, uh, um, 
I don't know, pick two famous artists that knew each other or, oh, yeah. you know, that, and you're just all like, oh, I would love to be the fly on the wall when uh, um, Picasso and um, uh, Brock Die- or Die- something. Die- oh, yeah. Diego Rivera, Rivera met yeah. each other because I wasn't really aware of that until recently yeah. that they even met or knew each other or whatever and that freaked me out yeah you know? and they had that great show at LACMA yeah that was the first time I knew that they even oh wow knew each other and yeah so th- I mean this is like the cool thing about yeah. the art world and the power of it and definitely anyway so we're trying to make just more of that yeah yeah no thank you so much I mean you know this is awesome and you know you're creating opportunity too you know because it's another opportunity you know to support artists and you know, and I mean, artists need it for sure. And yeah, I mean, yeah. we all need it. <laughs> yeah, like, um, obviously, like, um, I'm an artist living in the flight path, <laughs> flight, flight path of an airport. I need help. <laughs> send help. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff yep. Blue, send help. But yeah. no, thank you so much. It's yeah. been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks yeah. again. Yeah, you're welcome. Right. <laughs> okay, well, that was the last. Uh, interview of July for us here at Art Traffic. Special thanks to Christine Shoemaker of Shoebox Design. We also got her picks for artists she'd like us to speak with. And uh, we've got some other exciting interviews lined up coming up. Uh, I'm not ready to announce them totally yet, but once I do, mind's blown everyone. So stay tuned. Don't forget to download, like, and subscribe. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.